Lake sturgeon are some of the most remarkable fish in the Great Lakes. And as it turns out, they're pretty good teachers too. In some Michigan classrooms, lake sturgeon are not only engaging students in science curriculums like biology and chemistry, but the fish are also creating opportunities for students to learn about Native American culture. In 2014, the Little Traverse Bay Band Education Department partnered with staff members from the tribe's fish hatchery to develop a program that would introduce lake sturgeon, or Nime in Ojibwe, into Michigan classrooms. Our education department thought this would be a great opportunity to hit some standards like next generation science standards while also teaching about Anishinaabe uh, lifeways historically and contemporarily and how that feeds into the natural resources work that we do. The classroom program is now in more than a dozen schools throughout the state, but it started with a pilot program in Pelston in the northwestern corner of Michigan's Lower Peninsula. Brooke Groff, a science teacher at Pelston High School, was the first teacher in Michigan to begin raising a sturgeon in a classroom. Eight years ago, the, during the summer, uh, the tribe had reached out to um, my principal, Mr. Bacon. Um, in August, we met, and then we had sturgeon by the end of September. The Little Traverse Bay Band designed their program to fulfill Michigan's strict science teaching standards. But the tribe also crafted the program to include cultural lessons from a Native American perspective. We really wanted to make sure that students are able to learn about everything there is about Nime to Odawa people. We can be taught in any setting, and it doesn't necessarily have to be social studies or history classrooms, which is often the case. So we want to promote it in all classrooms, and it's especially exciting to do science-related work. The program is broken into 12 units that require the students to track the sturgeon's growth, learn the importance of sturgeon to indigenous cultures, and even build model dams. The lessons are built in a way that it pulls everything together to talk about the sturgeon. We complete math with some of the studies that we do and the lab activities that we do. Um, there's an engineering component with building the dams. And then there's also um, some English with that because they write some papers and they summarize their thoughts. We feed the sturgeon bloodworms based on their body weight daily. And so the students do take the mass of the sturgeon each week on Mondays, and then they know how much to feed them during the week. Chris Day manages the Little Traverse Bay Band's fish hatchery in Levering, Michigan, and he helps teachers keep their classroom sturgeon alive using internet-connected sensors. That change allows me to help with schools across the state. So when people are down in Saginaw or somewhere like that, and they say, my fish does not look good, something's wrong. I'll log in and I'll look at what their parameters have been, not only this today, right now, this week, last week, a month, I can look at all that. Maybe it's a fish hook problem, or maybe your tank's a little too cold, or maybe your tank's a little too warm, or that's just what surgeon do. <laughs> Often an obstacle for teachers to decide to take on this program is the commitment of making sure that the fish is fed at, over over weekends or over long breaks. I do come up on the weekends to feed the sturgeon and I work with cleaning the tank and teaching the students how to do that. And so I think that the time that I put in, uh, the value of what the students get out of it is worth my time. At the end of the school year, the tribe hosts a very special afternoon event for the students and the sturgeon. Each fish is blessed with a traditional song and ceremony before being released. The release day. We want to make sure that we're putting the fish, the name, into the water in a really good way. We gather everyone around and then we each have a pinch of tobacco or sema in an Anishinaabe Moan. We each have sema in our left hand and then we bring it together as a group and then we have students bring the whole collective good thoughts into the water before we release the name. We really like the release event because it brings everything together. And so it's a great closing. It brings all the pieces together and the kids can see um, that connection between the tribe and the sturgeon and the work that we did all year. If there's more than one volunteer, I'll try to pick someone that has done the most care. And so a student who, when I've had a sub, has stepped up to feed the sturgeon or do something extra or offer to help. And so um, I know that those students care about the sturgeon and I, I think that that's nice for them to get to do the release. 
There's this excitement of knowing that we finished the year and we were able to release the sturgeon and looking forward to next year. At Great Lakes Now, we aim to cover the Great Lakes region and the people who live here, like you. Please follow us on social media, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and sign up for our newsletter at greatlakesnow.org.